Welcome to another video showing you the um, slow cooker and actually air fryer meals that we're going to be having this week. It's after the week now, so I'm just about to go out and do some gardening. And I thought I'd just make sure I did a quick intro to the video, letting you know what you can expect. So previously I've shown the veg box um, that we get every Saturday on a separate video. I'm going to do that again this week, which is actually Saturday today. So I'll be videoing that later on today or tomorrow. Um, and as part of that video, I'm going to show you what we had left over from last week. Um, so from last week's veg box that we didn't get to and what we're going to do with it and then I'll show you the contents of this week's veg box and what we plan to do with it. So I hope you enjoy this video that's coming up now which is just showing you three days worth of meals which are the three days that I'm out of the office that I have to plan ahead and see what those meals look like. There's slow cooker in there but there is a, a, an air fryer using our air fryer as well. This morning I am putting a lamb leg joint in the slow cooker. This has got the bone in. I did say on the um, previous video, if that's gone out, where I just showed you the veg box that it, it was boneless, but it's not, it's bone in. And this is gonna go on low in the slow cooker all day for eight to 10 hours. It'll be lovely and tender later on. All I'm gonna do is season it with um, some salt and pepper and some rosemary and put a dash of water in the bottom um, because literally all we want is just the flavour of the lamb to come through so we can serve it with salad and wraps whatever we decide to tonight because it's going to be a really hot this week really hot day today but a really hot week this week and I'll show you what it looks like when I get home I'm just going to literally go to grab some rosemary from the garden now and I'm just going to bung it all in so it's barely a recipe I do enjoy doing uh, slow cooked meat so big joints of meat in the um, slow cooker because it's just the best way to do them in my opinion I would say this is a little over let me show you it so this is defrosted and it was from January of this year when we did processed our own lambs. Um, I would say this is maybe a kilo around there, maybe maybe just over 1.2 kilos. Um, and that's just going to go in our slow cooker crock pot all day long. I'm going to do that now and then we'll catch up tonight when I get home, show you what it looks like. For those that are interested, this is the herb bed that I've got. And as you can see, <laughs> the mint's taken over. Now you might be thinking that's a funny looking mint. It's apple mint. I think I might put some of that in as well, maybe just a sprig on the top, but this is the rosemary that I'm going to be taking it from. It is starting to come into flower, but that's absolutely fine. Um, and we, ha we have had problems with a few pests, but this one looks like it's suffered very little damage in comparison to some of the other rosemaries I've got. So I'm going to take some off this. Um, I do have dried rosemary, but I fancy fresh rosemary for this recipe. Putting it one hand, it's never easy. There we go, that'll be perfect. I have grabbed that onion out of the veg box. I don't even think I mentioned that, but um, I'm just chopped it in half. I've took the ends off and I'm gonna lay that like that because I wanna put the lamb on top of it just because, I don't think the lamb will burn with the liquid, but just in case, um, and the onion will give it a really delicious flavor as well. I've got the um, rosemary that you've just seen me pick and the apple mint, and I'm just gonna put those in exactly as they are with a bit of seasoning. Take the lamb out of here now and Bob's your uncle. There we go, that looks delicious. I've sprayed around the edges with this one cow spray. I'm not really sure why, it just felt like the right thing to do. Um, we've got the, the herbs are just tucked around the edges. If I had more time or if I felt inclined to, I would just put some slits in the lamb and I could tuck the rosemary in there. This would be really good with garlic in as well. I just don't want to get all garlicked up at the minute because I'm rushing out as always. That's on low, so let's see what tonight brings. This is the first look after we get back it's bubbling away and all of the herbs have infused down so let's get it out and have a look that's the lamb all shredded it is absolutely beautifully cooked this is the onion that was in with it which somebody might want and i've just pulled together a quick salad using stuff from the veg box and uh, salad leaves from the garden so we've got some cheese that i've just cut up just i couldn't be bothered to grate it salad um tomatoes some shredded carrots, red onions, um, spring onions, peppers, all sorts in there. And we're just going to have that with some taco shells and some bread or just with lamb, as, uh, lamb and salad, whatever you fancy. For today's meal, we were going to do the um, chicken in tarragon hot pot, but a bit like the weather, I've changed my mind all day long. So I wasn't supposed to be at home today. Um, and I find that when I'm given options, I always end up dithering about. Um, if I'd been in work, I would have done the slow cooker meal and that would have been that, that's what we would have had. But I thought it's going to be an absolutely scorching hot day. I don't really fancy a hot slow cooker meal um, to come home to. And then I ended up being at home today and I thought, oh, it's supposed to be a scorching hot day. Let's have a barbecue or something like that. 
anyway I've been on and off with what I'm going to do all day and it's finally time that I need to get food on the table for everybody so I've cheated a little bit and put some chicken pieces in the air fryer there I've got some sausages that I can put on as well and we are just going to quickly marinate some chicken breast I'm going to just grab the most basic marinade a kind of uh, I've just spread myself with the oven. A kind of chicken shashlik that we're going to make. Um, so I'll show you. Let me pull this down to what I'm doing. I'm just going to pour in some natural yogurt. I'm not weighing any of this out, but you want about 50 grams. That's more than that. And then we're going to do a tablespoon of soy sauce. I'm just going to put that around the edge. We're going to go in with a couple of teaspoons of garlic granules. Then we want a little bit of paprika. We can do about one teaspoon. Then we're going to have one teaspoon of ground ginger thereabouts. This isn't a teaspoon, this is a tablespoon. So I'm just guessing. And we're also going to have some chilli powder. Now, if you saw one of my videos, I did my own chilli powder from last year. I have no idea how hot this is or not. So that might be a bit of a disaster. And then I'm going to give it a stir. And we're going to leave this to marinade while I figure out what the um, size is going to be to have with tea. Now, ideally, I would have done this ahead of time um, and let it sit overnight, but I didn't. So this will sit for as long as it takes me to figure out what else I'm going to be doing um, to eat tonight. This is going to be quite a meat-heavy tea, um, which every now and again isn't so much of a problem. But I do have plenty of potatoes there, so I might shut some potatoes in as well into the air fryer. We'll see. I'm just going to leave that covered up now and I'll show you what it looks like when I decide what I'm going to do. I'm going to attempt to do some skinny fries in the air fryer. I've not done these before. I've done like roasties and um, chips, if you like, or wedges. And you normally would soak those and um, parboil them and then do them in the air fryer. Well, I haven't got time. Well, I probably do have time, but I don't have the energy to do any of that. Um, so I'm literally going to cut these nice and thin and just see how they turn out. Joy's of outdoor cooking, we've been joined by a fly and just see how they turn out um, with just seasoning um, and just being cut really thin, spray of air fry, um, one cow spray, see how it works. I'm sure they'll all eat. Do you know, I don't often use um, a potato peeler but the only knife that I've got out here is this big, big doofer. Um, so I'm using a peeler, a vegetable peeler tonight, and I find it much more dangerous than an actual knife. I know you only take off the top layer, but goodness me, I nearly took the top layer of my fingers off multiple times. Is there a technique that I'm, uh, that I'm not aware of for these smaller potatoes? It's all right when they're bigger. Is it because I'm always rushing? I always appear to be rushing? You tell me. So anyway, um, that's what we're going to have as a side. I haven't got any spare bread buns or breads or pitas or uh, flatbreads or anything like that at the moment. Um, if we've got them in, we tend to eat them and a bit like anything else, just trying to plan in advance. And as I said at the beginning, if I don't plan in advance and I'm given options, that's when that's when things fall over, a bit like the diet. Um, so if I plan what I'm eating and my calories for the day, then things generally work out well. If I give myself any options during the day, things don't always work out so well. I might do one more. Um, so speaking of the diet, I have been trying to do 1200 calories a day to lose some weight um, before we go on our holidays later on in the year, um, just because I feel like I need to. So what I've what I was doing was taking a tub of hummus to work. Oh my goodness, this is bruised. Taking a tub of hummus to work um, and just supposed to be eating like half a tub of hummus um, as my main meal of the day, uh, sorry, as my lunch meal. And I'm also fasting on those mornings, um, so I'm not having any breakfast. So I would take a tub of hummus to work with some vegetable sticks, which I absolutely love. I've got no issue with eating um, healthy foods and things like that. My problem is I just like food too much. Um, and so I was taking that vegetable sticks and hummus and that was working out just fine. But then I was finding that I was eating more and more of the hummus than I was supposed to from my calorie allowance. And I thought, hang on, why am I even going to the shop and buying hummus here when I live on the small holding? I've got a number of, um, I've got tons of duck eggs to spare at the moment. Um, why on earth aren't I taking in like a duck egg salad or something like that? 
So I took in yesterday, I did um, two duck eggs, which one might have been enough. Um, and just with some salad leaves out of the garden, some balsamic vinegar, and it was absolutely delicious. There was also in the veg box um, this week, which I forgot to say on the, uh, the, the video that I did, there was some radish. We had those the first night you can use, which somebody said in the comments below, so thank you very much for that. Um, and I would meant to say, because I've heard, but I've never tried it. Um, you can use radish in the slow cooker in place of potatoes. Um, it's supposed to be really nice. I, I like all the radish anyway. So people tell the dogs off in any way, shape or form. So that's a really good suggestion. So I had some of those radish in the lunch as well. And it was delicious with some grated carrot, no not grated, some like ribboned carrot. Very nice and I didn't have to go and buy anything from the shop. It was all from the small holding in the veg box. Right, I have chopped the potatoes. They're actually not as skinny as I thought. So whilst I'm talking to you, I'm just going to find the chunky ones and make them a little bit thinner. Otherwise, they'll take too long to cook. Um, and I'm not too sure what they'll turn out like without pot boiling. So all I'm going to do is spray them with some one cow spray, um, give them a shake and I'll spray them whilst they're in there as well. Put them on the air fry setting for like 20 minutes or 200 or something. I'm going to put some garlic granules on these two. We're going to smell delicious. Some onion granules just because they're close to hand. I like them. Some paprika. give all these a shake. They need salt and pepper on too, but I don't have that to hand, so I shall get that whilst they start cooking. I'm heating up some fat on the hob in a frying pan. I need somewhere to put this. Um, and I'm just gonna literally put the chicken pieces in. Um, I was gonna do them on the griddle that we've got there, but I've changed my mind. Losing energy fat. When I get these in, I've used too much yogurt in this recipe, um, that's fine, it's just the marinade and it'll all be delicious. So I'm just going to leave those be and just not touch them so that they can brown off, turn the heat up a little bit and just let those cook while I see to the chips. They aren't looking too bad actually. Just a bit longer, I've got the sausages and a couple of chicken pieces left in there and they are going to, I'll put the chips on just for a bit longer and we've already got a few chicken pieces done so I've just covered those up make sure nothing gets on them and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all served up. I've got some bits of salad left over from last night and I'm just adding to that using what we've got in the veg box. The salad by no means looks as nice as last night's salad but we have got to get the leftovers finished. Don't like leaving anything like that and incidentally the lamb that we had last night was obviously more, um, well, I'm saying obviously it was more than um, we needed for one meal. So Stephen took that today in a, his lunch um, and had it cold as part of his lunch today so there was no leftovers. That if you're just one person, for example, or if you're not cooking um, for as many people as I am, I mean, there's only four of us. Um, and actually only three of us ate the lamb because my daughter doesn't eat the lamb. But anyway, um, it's always good to cook for leftovers and you can have it cold or you could reheat it the next day appropriately and have it again. So this is what's happening now. Look, this is the, um, that's the chicken, which is pretty much done. So I'm gonna get served up. We got through that salad quite quickly. It's always good to have leftover salad to hand and that meat went down fantastically, a lovely meal. Look at that weather today. It's blissful. I'm just pulling the ingredients together for a chicken and tarragon hot pot, but we're going to do this one in the slow cooker. Welcome to Thursday morning. Doesn't it make a difference when the weather's nice? I'm going to show you what I've got prepared here. It would take too long to get it all um, on video this morning, and you've seen me cutting up a carrot and things before. So I'll work through what we're putting in the slow cooker. I have never done um, a hot pot in the slow cooker before. I've only ever done it in the oven so we'll see together how this works out again like i always say it all eats so i'm just at the minute slicing the potato quite thickly and um, that you would put on top of the hot pot now i imagine the hot pot won't be browned off like it would be in the oven so it might not look aesthetically fantastic but i'm sure it'll taste delicious so i've got two chicken breasts with the skin on because i haven't got time to take the skin off upside down so the skin's on the bottom of um, the slow cooker and I'm going to show you the rest of the ingredients now that I'm putting in. 
I think that camera is wonky this morning, so apologies. I've taken that much off the swede um, and I'm putting that in on top of the chicken first. It's all chopped up here at the side. I'm just going to throw it around the edges. I've also got one onion, just roughly chopped. Come on, work with me. And one stick of celery. Now, we're not celery lovers in this house. I do love it for stock. Um, I'll just get rid of that bit of skin but not, um, we don't like it raw and we don't like it in big chunks. So I've just got one stick of celery that I'm adding in there and some carrots, just a layer. Now, really you want to be adding in fresh garlic, but I don't have any, so I'm just gonna use the garlic granules that you guys have seen me use in the past. Add that in. I also want about 50 grams of pearl barley. Now, in an ideal world, you would have washed this, but I haven't. I've done it like that many times before and it's absolutely fine. I've got a couple of potatoes that are sliced like this, which we will put on the top, but I just need to add some stock in. So I'm going to quickly do that now. I have any hot water available at the moment. I haven't got time to boil the kettle. One of the things about doing the slow cooker meals, I'm always rushed for time, which is why, um, and if you're wondering, I do get up early. I've just got really busy mornings, but that's why I love the slow cooker meals, because if this works and you can just throw it all in, makes a big difference so i'm going to use two stock cubes which i hope doesn't make it too salty i will let you know um we're probably going to be eating at separate times tonight because um because grace and i have got an appointment after work so we'll see we'll see what's left when we get back now the important thing in this recipe is the tarragon you want about 10 grams of fresh tarragon if you can get it i do have tarragon in the garden but it's not ready to use i'm using quite a bit because i love tarragon i think it's one of my favorite herbs actually and then we're going to do a quarter teaspoon thereabouts of um let's do a half you know what i'm like i like the flavor of just mustard dry mustard just to shake that on the top you also can add some ground nutmeg, but my daughter's got a nut allergy and I'm not convinced um, that nutmegs aren't nuts, which I should know. But this morning, my brain isn't working and I don't want to add anything in that's going to cause any problems for anyone. So you could add a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg to this as well. So I'm just going to cover that up there. That's going to make our gravy. And then I'm just going to layer these on the top. These, this is two decent sized potatoes. And they're going to be exposed. So I'm just a little bit concerned that they might brown. But again, time will tell tonight. And there we go. That's it. That's going in now on low until we are back home from all our different places. I need to go and get the outside and switch it on. I've never had a problem with the slow cooker bubbling over or anything like that. Um, certainly when it's only got this much in and I've never had a problem with it burning or anything underneath. But just in case, I like to put it on on this um, chopping board. Right, I've literally got home and I am going out very soon. We are looking at this together again and this is bubbling. Look at that. It smells amazing in here. I mean, absolutely amazing. I'm going to try and add some. I'm going to try and shred the chickens. I'm pleased that these potatoes don't look too off-putting. Um, I'm going to try and shred the chicken that's underneath. And I'm going to add a touch of cream. I think I might have put too much liquid in here. Um, but never mind. We live and learn. I'll let you know what it's like. The cream could have gone in earlier uh, to make kind of a white sauce. But I thought I'll add it at the end. That chicken is, uh, I can feel it shredding really easily. I thought I'll add it at the end, um, just in case it kind of splits or anything like that. But I think it would have been fine. This has been on for at least eight hours, if not more. Um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's served up. Right, I've decided to make up a little cornflour slurry. Um, I've just done it in a cup because I always end up with lumps. I've still got a couple of lumps in there, so I'm just going to mix them out. You can see that there. I'm going to add that in to here, give it a bit of a stir, add a touch of cream in, and then uh, that they can serve it up when they're ready. I'm not going to eat just yet, but I will capture some when I eat later on. Hi. Hot pot. Mm. 
Mm. How are we doing? Close out. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing those meals. Um, we enjoyed the most the middle of the week meal, which was the meat heavy meal. I wasn't surprised about that though. The chicken and tarragon um, hot pot was really, really nice and it heated up the next day for lunch very well as well. So it was, um, as long as you reheat it from a chicken perspective, it'll be absolutely fine. You may be able to freeze it too. I haven't tried myself, um, but when it defrosts and reheats, I can imagine that potato will become a bit more mushy because when it was in the slow cooker, it's obviously super, super tender and breaks up easily. It would make a really good paste for a uh, paste, a really good base for a pie though. You could put some pastry on it and just enjoy um, just a chicken pot pie basically, or a chicken pie. Um, but yeah, of the three meals, the meat heavy one, so where we had the um, marinated chicken, the chicken pieces and the sausages went down the best. But from a practical point of view for myself, the lamb, so any um, joint of meat that's cooked in a slow cooker and provides leftovers is a really good deal from a being the person that does the cooking point of view and having to plan the meals out. Anything I can do that's got the leftovers that don't feel like leftovers, so... The cold meat definitely doesn't feel like leftovers because some people have an issue with that. Um, that helps me fantastically. So from a practical perspective, joint of meat always wins. Um, from a taste perspective, the guys wolf down the um, the meat that we had. But the chicken and tarragon pie was also, it was a nice, it was a winner too. Um, the two stock cubes that I put in were not far too much at all. To be honest, you could have got away with three or a little bit more um, salt because I didn't season it with putting the stock cubes in um, with salt. Um, so we added salt at the table. Some some people don't add salt into anything, so it's entirely up to you how much you put in, but it was absolutely delicious. Um, but definitely the middle of the week one won this week. So I hope you enjoyed this video, just not too long and just showing you kind of some of the meals that we get to when we're out and about and have busy days, whether it's through work or just through life. Um, I hope they give you some inspiration and I'll see you next week for more meals of the week, which will also be slow cooker. There'll be the odd air fryer one in there. Who knows until it happens. Before that though, there will be the veg box showing you what we've got left over from this veg box, what we're gonna do with it, and the contents of the next veg box. I just think it makes it easier breaking it down into two videos. Um, otherwise the, the meals of the week becomes one long video, but we'll see, I might do that moving forward. Forever questioning how to do the video formats and styles. So let me know if you've got any feedback, but for now, please give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment below because I really enjoy interacting. I'm going to go out and get in the garden because it is a gorgeous day and I've got tons to do. Catch you soon.